Alright, so uh, a bunch of videos ago we introduced the uh, general power rule here um, and we did a proof in the video but we kind of had to take something uh, for granted just a little bit. We did implicit differentiation um, and we kind of had to take one small step for granted uh, which in general we don't like to do um, but you know, implicit differentiation will be covered in a later video but uh, anyway, now that we've talked about the chain rule um, we can actually do another proof uh, of the general power rule where we don't take anything for granted, uh, which is good. So uh, here, remember the general power rule says ddx of x to the r equals rx to the r minus 1, where r represents any real number. It could be positive, it could be negative, it could be zero, uh, it could be any kind of fraction like two-thirds, it could be any kind of goofy irrational number like uh, you know 3 pi over 2, etc, etc. Um, any number at all. Uh, anyway, Let's go ahead and see how to prove that using the chain rule. Uh, before we do that, we want to remember uh, something kind of from pre-calculus. So remember, uh, x to the r equals what? Uh, equals e to the natural log of x to the r. Okay, because uh, e and natural log, you know, as functions, they're pretty much uh, inverses, right? They cancel each other out, uh, so to speak. So x to the r is the same thing as e to the natural log of x to the r. Um, you know, it's kind of easier to see if you start with this, uh, it's easier to see, you know, this simplifies to that, right? It's easier to see it that way. But, you know, just as easily, of course, you could say this equals that. Um, okay, so we're going to start here with x to the r and go here to this. This is a pre-calculus thing. Um, and then this is the same thing as e to the r natural log of x, okay? Because really this is like that, right? So the uh, exponent there can come out as a factor, and we have that. So that's good. Um, so now ddx of x to the r equals ddx of e to the r ln x, right? Um, because x to the r equals e to the r ln x, therefore their derivatives have to be equal, okay? And we know how to take the derivative of this, right? Uh, this is just going to be straight up chain rule. So, uh, remember the derivative of e to a thing is just e to that thing times the derivative of that thing, all right? Um, let's leave some space and we'll say times d dx of r ln x. Okay, so again, uh, the derivative of e to a thing is just e to that thing times the derivative of that thing. In this case, that thing is r ln x, all right? What is r? It's just a constant, right? Remember, r is any real number. It's just some constant. Uh, that's all it is. So we can pull it out of the derivative. So um, now we have, uh, well, first of all, okay, what's this? e to the r ln x. Remember, that is uh, x to the r, right? e to the r ln x is x to the r. So let's go ahead and say this here. x to the r times r times d dx of ln x. What's that? That's 1 over x, all right? So now this simplifies to uh, x to the r times r times 1 over x. Okay, so we have this r here. And then x to the r divided by x is x to the r minus 1, right? Because um, if you, you know, divide the same base, you subtract the exponents, uh, x is just like x to the first. So x to the r divided by x to the first is x to the r minus 1. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Um, and this is actually the desired result, right? d dx of x to the r equals blah 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 equals rx to the r minus 1 and that's what we were looking for so uh, that's another proof of the general power rule and this one uses the chain rule um, so that's that